Imagine having a packed schedule with back-to-back -back obligations, appointments, and commitments. You make decision after decision all day long. From the minute you get up, you're constantly bombarded with things to do, things to organize, things to clean, things to manage. The constant rushing and juggling leaves you feeling stressed and burnt out. You feel like you can't even finish one task well before you begin another. For many of us, this isn't an imaginary scenario. It's the reality of our daily lives. Over the last eight years, my family has slowly moved toward becoming less stressed, less messy, less disorganized, and less overworked. Since I began implementing minimalist principles, I've seen meaningful benefits, including more focus, more time, and even more joy. Ready to see what minimalism can do for you? Here are seven habits that can help you on your journey. Habit one, practice self-awareness and know your limits. Everyone has different thresholds for what they can handle without feeling overwhelmed. Each person's tolerance for physical and mental clutter varies, and it's essential to recognize and respect those differences in ourselves. I know that when I attempt to manage too much at once, I just get poor outcomes across several tasks. I do my best work when I can focus on accomplishing a few key tasks during my day, rather than loading my day with items and obligations. Doing a few things well is often better than accomplishing multiple tasks poorly. We sometimes feel pressured by expectations about how much stuff we should have or how busy our lives should be, but the truth is there's no one-size-fits-all approach to our schedules and environments. If a cluttered environment drains your energy and hampers your ability to concentrate, it's perfectly okay to simplify and create a more minimalist space where possible. Self-awareness and knowing your limits are key to finding balance. We're all designed differently. Embrace what works for you. But what if this sounds limiting? Aren't we meant to do it all? This brings us to habit two, embrace simplicity. While many of us were taught to glorify busyness for its own sake and to wear stress as a badge of honor, sometimes we need a break. Embrace the idea that a calm, simple life can create more space for meaningful activities and much needed rest. When we're exhausted by excessive choices and tasks, we're unable to make decisions or take action due to the anxiety of figuring out what to tackle next. If we believe that we must have more and do more to meet some external set of expectations, we'll never be satisfied with a simpler life. Get comfortable with the idea of less. When we enjoy less, less stuff, less chaos, fewer commitments on our time, we help alleviate overwhelm and decision fatigue, enabling us to make calmer, better choices. So now that we're comfortable with the idea of simplicity, how do we continue to apply it to our lives? To really feel benefits, we need to use habit three, declutter to gain time and energy. Getting rid of things is hard. We get trapped by what's known as the endowment effect, an emotional phenomenon in which we assign a high value to things simply because we already own them. However, holding on to possessions that no longer bring value or joy can drain our resources. We own kitchen appliances we don't use, clothes we don't like, toys our kids don't play with, and even containers full of things we can't even remember. By letting go of those items, you can free up physical and mental space, allowing you to focus your time and energy on maintaining a home that serves you and functions well. Decluttering expert Dana K. White recommends keeping a donation bag or bin easily available. Then you can toss in items as you come across them, streamlining the decluttering process. For instance, if you notice a shirt in your closet that you haven't worn in months or no longer fits, you can quickly place it in the donation bag without much thought or effort. Remember, decluttering is an ongoing process that supports your well-being. You and the people you care about hold greater value than the stuff that consumes your time and mental resources. Because of this, we need to practice habit four. Prioritize experiences over possessions when you can. What do you remember doing recently that made you smile? Is it reading a favorite book, going on morning walks with your dog, volunteering at a food bank, maybe taking a weekend trip with your kids? Your favorite memories likely don't revolve around things. They revolve around experiences and people. Experiences aren't just once-in-a-lifetime vacations. They can include travel, but they also include learning, helping, and enjoying quality time with loved ones. These activities can enrich our lives in ways that stuff doesn't. Happiness derived from memorable experiences tends to outweigh the fleeting satisfaction of buying something new. I'm not suggesting that we make poor financial decisions to fund trips or that things never add any use or value to our lives. I am suggesting that, when possible, we shift our focus from having things to doing things. When we reflect on our lives, learning, doing good for others, and spending time with people we love matters much more than the things we buy. But how do we make time for those experiences? With habit five, simplify your schedule. We can't do everything at once. We've been trained to think that we can and even that we should, but it's a lie. People aren't designed to work constantly without rest. It's important to be realistic about the time and energy you have available when creating to-do lists and planning your schedule. By acknowledging your limitations, you can avoid overwhelming yourself and reduce stress. Instead of cramming your schedule with numerous tasks and commitments, focus on a few priorities each day. What really needs to happen? What matters most for your job, your family, or other priorities? You can't do everything, so pick two or three highlights that best utilize your time. When you prioritize, you allocate your time and energy more effectively, ensuring that you can dedicate your best efforts to each task without spreading yourself too thin. Embrace the concept of balance in your pursuit of big goals. Hard work is good, but rest and rejuvenation are also vital. 
your best work can't happen if your time is spread across dozens of obligations or if you are too exhausted to think clearly. Take time to rest and remember to prioritize your important relationships amidst the busyness of life. Simplifying your schedule allows you to allocate quality time and attention to the relationships that matter most to you. Are you working towards simplifying your own schedule? Do you have habits or tips I haven't mentioned that could help someone else? Let me know in the comments below what works for you. Simplifying your days can be even more effective when you pair it with habit six, create routines. Establishing daily routines brings a sense of order and intention to our lives, helping us navigate the time we have with greater ease and purpose. Routines are just pre-made decisions. They don't have to be complex to help us along. Not everyone needs or desires an elaborate 20-step morning ritual. Our routine should serve us, not the other way around. By following a consistent routine, you give your day a clear direction and a sense of accomplishment. Try attaching meaningful activities to existing parts of your day. For example, if you enjoy reading, try incorporating a few minutes of reading time with your morning coffee or your lunch break. Sit down for a simple family breakfast on Saturdays or listen to your Bible study during your commute. Through these intentional actions, we can enhance our overall well-being and find greater fulfillment in our day-to-day -day experiences. Positive routines move our days forward, but negative ones can hold us back. To create your best routines, consider habit seven, limit or even give up social media. How often do you feel fantastic after scrolling social media? It often makes us feel worse, not better. Exposure to all of the drama and comparison found on many social media accounts drains us emotionally. Recognizing this impact is the first step toward making a positive change. If you find that social media isn't working for you, consider cutting back. I ultimately decided to delete social media apps from my phone, and you may want to take this approach. You can also replace your social media time with activities that better serve you and those around you. When you feel the urge to scroll, you could listen to a podcast that sparks your curiosity, have conversation with your family or a loved one, or just rest if you need some downtime. These activities recharge you and contribute to your overall well-being. If you love your favorite social media and find value in it, consider setting limits to avoid wasting unintentional time and experiencing negative effects. Instead of reaching for your phone at bedtime or during moments with your children, set boundaries to prioritize more meaningful interactions. Mindful use could help you maintain a healthy balance and prevent it from becoming a time-consuming habit that interferes with other aspects of your life. At their core, minimalist habits are about simplifying your life to prioritize what truly matters. By embracing minimalism, you can better manage your time and attention, leading to a more deliberate and satisfying way of living. To learn more about how minimalism can benefit you, watch this video next.